Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis and acne and eczema and rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to source. We want to help you change your life today. If you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. Our number today and every day on the bright side, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. You can also head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and order products right, at the, right off of the website, also brightsideben.com. And of course, you can also sign up to join the Longevity team. Join me and my mission to help educate the world about how powerful and important a good nutritional supplement program can be. You can make some money doing it. You can help change the world and earn a living or make a little bit of money or a lot of money by joining the longevity team, joining my team for a one-time $25 fee. Call the phone team. They can tell you all about it at 866-735-2470, or you can sign up right off the website, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. And, of course, if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all loaded, packed with vitamin C, our Retinol 5% Gel. It's got more retinol than you're going to find anywhere. And uh, also vitamin C as well. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, silicon oil. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. Only active and functional ingredients. That's my promise to you. And I've been doing this, folks, for 32 years. I started formulating skincare products in the early 1980s. I know a thing or two about how this stuff is done. And I know how the sausage is made. And I'll tell you what. I wouldn't recommend any skincare products that have preservatives and waxes and emulsifiers and surfactants and and this is really what the skincare business is all about. It's really about profit margin, and unfortunately, that's, uh, that's what most skincare products are about. True skin health products are about health. They're treatments, they're about your skin, and you will notice results. Smoother skin, softer skin, more hydrated skin. In short order, within one or two doses, you're going to notice results. Within a week, people will be commenting, What are you doing to your skin? TruthTreatments.com. Check them out at TruthTreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking youth and health and fertility, all as it regards the PPD hormones, pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA, three powerful steroid hormones that balance, even block some of the unpleasant effects of the stress hormones, cortisol and estrogen. If you're dealing with uh, some of the effects of uh, excessive secretion of cortisol, such as insomnia, jitteriness, Dizziness when you stand up uh, quickly or, or uh, stand up from a seated position, for, from a laying down position. If you're not building muscle like you want to build muscle or if you're gaining weight around the middle, these can all be signs of excessive cortisol secretion. If you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease, certainly you're dealing with excess cortisol secretion. If you have an autoimmune problem, you may be dealing with, ex uh, with problems with your estrogen system. 
problems breaking down estrogen. The PPD hormones balance and even block the effects of cortisol and estrogen. If you're on prednisone, or if you're aging rapidly, or if you're just aging, these are three hormones that you want to know about. Pregnenolone, DHEA, and progesterone. Pregnenolone and DHEA are available in health food stores or on the internet. Progesterone also, although for the really good concentrations of progesterone, 5% or 10% progesterone, I used to make a 10% progesterone cream in my compounding pharmacy. For the good concentrations, you need to get a script. Although you can get 2% uh, progesterone cream uh, over the counter. You also want to make sure that you're helping support your body's production of the PPD hormones with dietary strategies, using your ultimate EFAs, supplementing with vitamin A and zinc, supplementing with the B vitamins, particularly vitamins B5, pantothenic acid, and B6. B5 and B6 have a seriously important role to play in when it comes to hormone production. You want to make sure that you're processing your fats correctly. If you're dealing with the gallbladder, uh, gallbladder issues, or you had a gallbladder removed, or intestinal health issues, the chances are pretty good that you're go going to have issues with your PPD hormones because progesterone, pregnenolone, and DHEA depend on appropriate fat metabolism. Use digestive enzymes. Use your ultimate enzymes. Use lecithin, bile salts. All of these can help your body process fats as we've talked about endlessly on this program. Also, the ketogenic diet. That's another strategy. Eating high fat, low carb, moderate protein, the ketogenic diet can also help you with your PPD hormones. We've been so bamboozled into believing that the medical model can take care of our illnesses. Despite all evidence of the contrary, we're more drugged out and doctored than any other culture in the history of mankind and we're sicker than ever. We need a new way of looking at health. We need to fire the medical model and do the work ourselves doesn't do us any good to whine and moan about the well-documented failures of modern medicine because we can be doctor-free if we so desire. To maintain health, or to get it back if we don't have health, is really more about the simple things. Breathing, relaxing, the ketogenic diet, eating salt, reduce, uh, reducing digestive burden, fasting, caloric restriction, mono diet where you eat just one kind of food at a, uh, at a time. Liquid nutrition, hot water, meditation, Reiki, the power of our mind, the power of consciousness. Don't underestimate the power of the mind. This is something that we've only begun to recognize scientifically. Oh, really, well, we've known about it for 100 years or so. The original quantum physicists talked about this, Max Born and uh, Max Planck. Uh, Werner Heisenberg, the original quantum physicist, recognized that there was a role for consciousness in, in the creation of our world and reality. But now it's becoming more and more recognized by the medical model, by scientists, I should say, not necessarily by the medical model. One of the classic examples of the failure of modern medicine involves the emperor of all maladies, cancer, whose rates, according to the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, are increasing. Quote, new cases of virtually all types of cancer are rising in, in countries globally, according to a new analysis of 28 cancer groups in 188 countries, unquote. This year, more than a million Americans and more than 10 million people around the world are expected to get a cancer diagnosis. Nearly 600,000 Americans are going to die of the disease, and around the world, 8 million, uh, 8.2, excuse me, 8.2 million people. And the ultimate tragedy is that cancer is, for the most part, preventable. As with all so-called diseases, we need a new approach to dealing with this nightmare health condition, which is a classic ultimate example of a body that is freaked out. And by the body, I mean its living components, the cells. Cancer is the end result of cells that are traumatized. Like all disease, cancer is a cell disease. Even though the medical model treats organs and tissues, at the end of the day, cancer is about the cells. It's about cells in duress, cells that are freaked out, cells that have been starved, suffocated, toxic for so long that they don't know what else to do. A cancer cell is a sociopathic cell. A cancer cell doesn't care about its neighbors, doesn't care about the environment it lives in. It only cares about its own growth. It only cares about its own selfish needs. By the way, can anybody see a metaphor here? The medical model addresses cancer in the same way it addresses all disease. 
not by helping the body get better, but by making it worse, radiating it, killing it, killing cancer. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and uh, benfuchsarchives.com as well. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com. I want to tell you about an event. My friend, Melissa Galladay, nutritional pharmacist, Melissa Galladay. I've known her for over 15 years. She's one of the good guys, one of the good gals. She's a registered pharmacist, and she's also part of the longevity team. She's going to be doing a weekly longevity program, Longer Life with Longevity. And you can, uh, it's going to be a weekly program that's on the internet via via an app called Zoom, which I haven't used yet, but apparently it's a way that you can uh, you can do presentations. She's going to be doing a weekly presentation on longevity products and how you can use longevity products to stay healthy, to get healthy if you're not healthy. Starting this Tuesday, or actually it says here starting last Tuesday, June 7th, but it's every week. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, dial 1-646-558-8656, that's 1-646-558-8656, and then you have to punch in a meeting ID, 579-044-9276. I've known Melissa for for, uh, over 15 years, and she knows a lot about nutrition and a lot about health. You want to check that out if you're dealing with any health challenges, that's... uh, on Zoom, dial 1-646-558-8656, meeting ID 579-044-9276, and that's every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay, so I want to take a take a, a few minutes to talk. Actually, we're going to do this for a couple of days. We'll talk about cancer, which is obviously the terrifying diagnosis. A million Americans every year get diagnosed with cancer. It's the second leading cause of death in this country. And as with all diseases, it's really just an example of a body in distress, really cells in distress, cells that are traumatized, cells that have been swimming in their own toxicity, cells that have been starved, cells that have been suffocated for decades. The medical model kills cancer. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying there's not times you need to kill cancer or remove cancer or radiate cancer. Sometimes you need that. But many times this approach is really does more harm than good, particularly in the early stages. Remember, the body's immune system, this is so important, the body's immune system is fully equipped to deal with cancer. The body has the immune system, the defensive system has the weaponry, the chemical weaponry to take care of cancer, which occurs technically in all of us every day. What distinguishes the appearance of the full-blown disease called cancer from the appearance of the cancer cells that occur regularly is overwhelm of the immune system. Something is just burdening the immune system. It's off fighting wars on multiple fronts. And so it can no longer do its cancer fighting business. It's overwhelmed. It's stressed out, much like the cell itself. A cancer, cancer cell is a stressed out cell, and when cancer appears in the body, it's because the body is stressed out too. Cancer is the manifestation of duress on two levels, at the level of the cell and then the level of the body. If you talk to people who study cancer, they'll tell you there's hundreds of different types of cancer. There's five different types, five different categories, hundreds of different cancers, but there's five different categories, carcinomas, sarcomas, leukemias, lymphomas, and brain cancers. Those are the five different categories of cancer. Carcinomas involve the covering, the so-called epithelial tissue, the coverings and the glands, the skin. Sarcomas are in the connective tissue or sometimes in the muscle or maybe the fat or the blood vessels. Leukemias are in the bone marrow. They involve uh, uh, white blood cells. Lymphomas are in the immune system. 
Brain cancers are in the brain, obviously, and central nervous system cancers. Medical researchers will tell you that cancer is the result of viruses and toxins and foods and smoking and environmental pollutants. But these simply represent the cell stresses. They're not causes of cancer. People who smoke don't automatically get cancer. Foods don't automatically cause cancer. These are stressors. There's a difference. They're not direct causes. The direct cause of cancer is a cellular transformation that is adaptive. It's corrective. It's one of the ways the cell responds to trauma. That's what cancer is. It's one of the ways that cells respond to duress. It's a response to abuse. Cancer is a cell disease. It represents cellular distress, and it is the ultimate result. It's the culmination of long-term cellular burden. Starvation, suffocation, toxification, and inflammation. That means we don't have lung cancer. We have lung cell cancer. We don't have colon cancer. We have colon cell cancer. We don't have liver cancer or brain cancer or stomach cancer. We have liver cell cancer, brain cell cancer, stomach cell cancer. And doctors don't tell you this because the doctor's not allowed at the level of a cell. This is why we never hear about the cellular nature of cancer or any disease because the medical model is not welcome at the level of a cell. All the medical model can do at the level of a cell is trick the cell, poison the cell, kill the cell, excise the cell, it cannot nourish, heal, sustain, oxygenate, detoxify the cell. That's why they don't talk about it. When you look at it this way, it simplifies the whole subject. When you look at cancer as, a, uh, as the manifestation of a cell that's in duress, it doesn't matter where the cancer is. It doesn't matter if it's liver cancer or stomach cancer or bone cancer. It's a cell disease. This is true about all diseases, but particularly cancer. Cancer cells are rogue cells. They're growing out of control. They pay no attention to their neighbors. Ordinarily, neighbors, cellular neighbors, tell the cell whether to grow or not grow. Cells are responsive to the neighbors. Cells are responsive to their environment. But a cancer cell is not responsive. And there's always going to be inflammation involved. There's always going to be genetic changes involved. Cancer cells have certain hallmark features. They evade death. They don't die. They are subject to genetic changes, and there's always going to be some kind of inflammatory process that's involved. But the most important point is that cancer is the result of an interaction between the cell and the environment. Cancer is about the environment that the cell is sitting in. It's a cellular response to a toxic, uh, a suffocated lack of oxygen or lack of nutrient environment. Research demonstrates that when a cancer cell is put in a normal environment, it reverts back. It can revert back. Scientists can make a cell turn back to normal when they put it in a normal environment. This shows us that the environment impacts carcinogenesis, cancer. According to a 2008 article in the Journal of Pharmaceutical Research, only 5 to 10% of cancer cases are genetically inevitable while, quote, 90 to 95 percent have their roots in the environment. This is true about the body environment, and it's true about the cell environment. Cancer cells can revert when they have the appropriate environment. This is so powerful. This is so important. It frees us, it liberates us from this medical idea that we have to have a war on cancer, that we have to kill cancer. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll take a break. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got more good health information and your phone calls coming up right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll continue our discussion on cancer on our next live Bright Side episode. If you uh, are interested in checking out nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay, registered pharmacist, on her Longer Life with Longevity series, you can uh, dial in 646-558-8656 every Tuesday, 6 p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time. That's 646 558 Eight six five six, meeting ID five seven nine zero four four nine two seven six. Hope to have Melissa on the program here, and she could tell you more about it. 
If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, head to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. From the journal uh, from Science Network, Western Australia, which is a science news website based in SciTech. Uh, I don't know what SciTech is, but some kind of some kind of organization here. Walking down the stairs could help prevent dementia. I love this. So I'm talking about the simple little things. You know, there's no drugs for Alzheimer's disease. There are no drugs for treat dementia, but it turns out they're walking down the stairs, according to uh, Edith Cowan, university professor. Uh, according to uh, Ken Nosaka, university professor. Uh, let's see what it says here. This is from. Uh, this is from uh, Western Australia. A number of studies, including one, showed that uh, 26 men between the ages of 60 and 76 followed a regimen of, of uh, walking down the stairs. And they monitored uh, various measure. They took various measurements, heart rate, blood pressure, physical fitness, blood glucose, blood lipids, and insulin sensitivity. All markers improved just by walking down the stairs. Here's another one. The 5-2 diet, which is an intermittent fasting diet in the fight against diabetes. It's useful in the fight against diabetes. And this is also from South Australia. Reduction in blood glucose and weight loss with intermittent fasting. Where have you heard that before? Exercise hormone, irisin. When you exercise, you secrete anti-cancer hormones. That's what I'm talking about, these simple little things that we can all do to improve our health. You don't need the medical model. We've been bamboozled, we've been hoodwinked into believing that when we're sick, we go to a doctor where doctors can somehow prevent illness, despite all evidence to the contrary. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let us go to Tristan in Canada. Canada, welcome to the bright side, Tristan. Where are you in Canada? Hi, I'm from uh, Toronto, Canada. Hey, Ben. Hey, did I, did I meet you on my, my journey? Uh, you know what? I'm just a, I'm a huge fan of your work. I I found uh, some of your work on YouTube, and okay. uh, yeah, I'm just a huge fan. You know the way you broke down, you know, acne on the cellular level. I never really, uh, you really changed my perspective on how I view things. Nice. So what's going on? How can I help you today? So my question would be in uh, regards to well, it's both for acne and okay. Uh, I should ask this one first. Uh, how would uh, you treat sebaceous cysts. Is there any way to reverse that? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Sebaceous cysts, like all cysts, are a sign that the cells are growing out of control. They're not stable. So a couple things. First of all, with all acne, you want to work on your blood glucose and your sugars. And that means, number one, reducing your intake of sugar, and number two, using nutrients that help the body process sugar. There's a major connection between insulin, testosterone, male hormone, and sebum and the growth of cells, sebaceous cysts or sebum cells growing out of control. When cells grow out of control, especially in uh, uh, men, uh, in the, and especially in the skin, in, in the sebaceous glands, you want to focus on blood sugar and you want to focus on the hormone testosterone. Actually, it's, the, it's a, a metabolite or a breakdown product of testosterone. So, so what are the strategies? Well, in addition to not eating foods that spike your blood sugar, you want to use the B vitamins. Those are yep. stupendously important for processing sugar. Uh, also, particularly vitamin B5 plays a role in how fats are processed. So for all sebaceous or oily skin conditions, vitamin B5, high doses. It's a must-have. And it's a very underappreciated uh, nutrient, by the way, pantothenic acid. And when I say high doses, I'm talking three or four grams a day, even up to five or six or seven grams a day. Okay. In conjunction with all the Bs. Zinc, superstar, superstar mineral for acne, for a all kinds of stuff, and zinc deficiency is very common. Zinc picolinate, 50 milligrams a day. You can use topical zinc, and you can make your own topical B5 cream, by the way. Uh, chromium vanadium, very important for processing sugar. Longevity sweeties will get you those. Selenium, very underappreciated when it comes to sugar metabolism, helping the body process sugar. Also, selenium is important for acne conditions. Uh, I love N-acetylcysteine, NAC, just as a general, uh, as a general skin tonic. I uh, actually have an acne formulation coming out here, hopefully in a couple of weeks, that's going to include all of these, uh, sub, all of these nutrients that we're talking about. Um, and we'll, we'll be talking about those. We'll be advertising those on GCN, so you'll hear about that. And then uh, 
And then as far as testosterone goes, uh, this breakdown product of testosterone called DHT, which you may have heard of, dihydrotestosterone, it's like a super testosterone. Zinc will help you with that. And then also uh, essential fatty acids, particularly omega-6 essential fatty acids. And by the way, omega-6 essential fatty acids have a liquefying effect on sebum. They will help sebum flow more efficiently. One of the things that happens when we have acne is the sebum gets sticky and clogged and um, uh, clogs up the follicles or the pores. So using your ultimate EFAs and then an a, a interesting uh, omega-6 fat called GLA can also have an anti-DHT effect. Zinc, as I say, is also anti-DHT. Uh, let's see what else I could tell you about here. Uh, you, uh, here's a good one. Exfoliating with alpha hydroxy acids or salicylic acid as a topical remedy and retinol. Super, super, super topical ingredient. Probably along with salicylic acid, retinol is the most important topical ingredient for dealing with acne skin or hypersebaceous skin or dealing with any kind of sebaceous cyst for that matter. And of course, you get that from my uh, retinol 5% gel, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Does that help you? Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, so what if uh, the cyst has already, <clears throat> already formed? Uh, you can exfoliate it away, number one, or you can, depending on where it is, or you can, and you can use salicylic acid for that, or you can do all the strategies I'm talking about, the cyst will revert, will, will, it will go away on its own. Okay, that's fantastic. And my last question would be, so I'm an ex-Accutane user, and when I was on Accutane uh, before it, well, my first course was very successful, but acne came back. And uh, when I went on my second course, it really disrupted my digestive tract. Is there any way to help that? Yes, absolutely. Probiotics, fermented foods, f elimination diet. It sounds like you have some digestive stuff going on, uh, and that's what's causing the acne, by the way. That could be a result of leaky gut. So you want to do an elimination, a food diary and an elimination diet. You probably know what that is. You write down everything you eat, and then you eliminate foods, caloric restriction, eating less food, certainly less snack food and, and processed foods, you know, bars and cereals and anything that comes in a box, basically. And then uh, fermented foods, vegetable juices. Vegetable juices are amazingly important for the digestive system for a couple of reasons. The fiber is very helpful. Uh, not only will the fiber help clean out the colon, but bacteria feed on the fiber and they proliferate and they actually produce really interesting compounds that support colon health as they digest the fiber. And then also vegetables are a source of nitrates and nitrites, which some people think are bad, but they're not necessarily when they come in, in natural sources. They're, they're definitely bad in preserved meats. But in, vitamin, in uh, vegetables, they can actually help support digestive health. Also, aloe vera, very helpful. Noni, very helpful. Longevity has a great noni product. And fucoidin, also very helpful for helping support gut health. Got to move, Tristan. Thank you so much for your call. And I hope we helped you out. Thanks for calling from Canada. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. The Bright Side, Pharmacist Ben here. I'm going to go really fast. I got a bunch of calls, and I wanted to try and squeeze everybody in here. So I apologize for uh, moving fast, um, but uh, I want to get uh, some, some of you guys can hold on for a while. I want to get to everybody. Mario in California, welcome to The Bright Side. What's up, buddy? Hey, hey Ben. Thank you for picking up. I appreciate your help here. Um, sure. I've been listening to you for for since you've been on Coast to Coast, and you've been very nice. helpful with my digestive issues. But I awesome. got a little... little little something more serious. My 16-year-old son had a massive seizure last oh. Wednesday. Oh. Wow, I'm sorry. Um, and no other health challenges? Nothing else happened? No, he was in an, actually, other than acne, and he was taking some of the advice you gave us with vitamin A and zinc and, and other copper and other stuff. But other than that, he had Is his skin clearing up? Yeah, yeah, it's helping a lot. We got him off of whatever else they were giving him, and he was, nice. he was doing great. He was doing great. Uh, okay. You know, he has uh, sinus issues his whole life. He, he did was, have sinus issues? Yeah, taking oh. various uh, okay. you know, uh, allergic uh, allergy medications and all kinds of 
Okay, well, here's the deal. This is where a couple things you want to focus on. First of all, uh, if you've heard me talking about the ketogenic diet, that's an anti-seizure diet. That's the first mm -hmm. thing you want to do. Second thing is there's nutrients that can help. The B vitamins are your brain vitamins. You should be doing high doses of the B vitamins. Also, zinc is a very important brain mineral. He wants to be doing zinc. I would start uh, him on lithium orotate, which you can buy at a health food store, maybe five milligrams a night. You might want to try GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, and also glycine. These are two, um, well, glycine's an amino acid. GABA is a kind of neurotransmitter amino acid. And also, there's a very important relationship between the gut and the brain, as, as well, this should be no surprise if you've been listening to this program. Uh, GABA actually is a form of butyric acid, gamma amino butyric acid, GABA, which is a digestive fat, if you will. It's a short chain fatty acid that's made in the gut. So working on the gut is extremely important. I'd be doing an elimination diet. The sinus uh, issues tell me that he's got some kind of, possibly anyway, or probably, he's got some kind of allergic reaction happening to foods. And that can cause uh, seizures, by the way, uh, reactions like that. So you, elimination diet is a must, and that means means uh, do a food diary and then eliminate problem foods. Fasting in conjunction with the elimination diet and uh, food diary will do double duty. Number one, it'll resensitize him to foods that he may be not noticing he's having a problem with. And also, fasting is a great strategy for seizure disorders. So you got lots of things you could do there. Uh, uh, keeping the sugar down. One last thing. One last thing. Keeping the sugar down. And kids, you know, they're all always into sugar. So keeping the sugar down is very important. Use sugar metabolizing nutrients. And if he can't wean himself off of sugar, more protein, especially uh, whey protein and, and building proteins, whey, egg, and organ meats. Go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. Um, sugar won't be an issue. He doesn't really drink soda or anything. Not even soda. Well, bread, cereal, pasta, yeah, potatoes. That, that bread, that's all, that's uh, all sugar, bro. Chips, uh, <laughs> stuff like that he does, but... I guess the diet might be tough for a 16-year-old. What's your advice? On well, that? the diet might be tough, but seizures are tougher. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's kind of like that. Yes, of course the diet's tough because we're hardwired. That's why you got to hack into, his, uh, into the drives, the eating behavior drives. Protein will hack into it. BCAAs, branched chain amino acids, can help reduce sugar cravings. Um, give him salt water if he has salt cravings. Make sure he's getting enough good fat. Coconut oil, by the way, can help. With the, help is a great brain supplement. Also good for seizure disorders, and also if he has enough butter and coconut oil, he may not crave the fatty foods. Have him start off the day with a little coconut oil, protein, and uh, his uh, his uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and then if he still wants salty kinds of foods, a little bit of Celtic sea salt and water. Hack into those cravings. It's really important. There's a major connection between what he's eating, as well as nutritional deficiencies and seizures. And yes, I know it's hard, but seizures are harder. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's. Uh shocking i'm still trying to get over it so well if you if you do everything i said you can mitigate the you can reduce the likelihood of more seizures and you can definitely make them healthier all around i got to move on mario thank okay. you for your thank call you. buddy appreciate thank the kind you. words barbara in west virginia welcome to the bright side What's hi. Up? hey hi i've got cataracts they're oh. to the point of needing surgery um i'm already trying as hard as i can to stay on a ketogenic diet taking tons of nutrients and you know listening to you but I'm still having problems. Well, keep doing it because after the surgery, they'll help you recover. So you may I'm have afraid of the surgery. I don't want the surgery. Okay. Well, cataract. Here's the deal with cataracts. They're the sign that the lens is damaged, particularly from sugar, as well as just oxidation from the light. Uh, cataracts are part of the degenerative disease process. They're arthritis of the lens of the eye. It's the same thing. The lens of the eye is breaking down. So the primarily, the, your primary strategies are going to involve sugar, uh, reducing sugar, and using sugar metabolizing nutrients. You know, I'm, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's the same yeah. thing over and over again. So uh, chromium, vanadium. Uh, you that sugar metabolizing nutrients. Yes, chromium, vanadium. That's the sweeties. Oh, oh, that's the sweeties. All the B vitamins, particularly vitamins B1 and B6, or I'm sorry, B1 and B3 which is thiamine and niacin. I'd be using the ultimate niacin from longevity. Forgot to mention that for sugar metabolism. Niacin is very important for helping the body process sugar. And uh, longevity has a really cool new product called the ultimate niacin, which is a timed release niacin. It'll help lower your cholesterol. It's important for the heart. It's important for the skin. It's important for acne, by the way. Uh, okay. So, uh, and also for cataracts, of course. Uh, and I got one question. Well, there's tons more here. I'm gonna give you a couple more things to, to, to do. Focus on digestive health. As toxins accumulate in the blood, it becomes much more difficult for the body to heal, and that includes the lens of the eye. Go ahead, Barbara. Uh, they said that 
say after the surgery, even if they're successful with surgery, 50 to 70 percent of them wind up in macular degeneration because well, you're so because nobody took care of the problem, because the boneheads didn't take care of the problem. You know what I'm saying? They just, they just yeah. replaced the lens. So th that's, what, that's what we're talking about with cancer. If you don't take care of the problem, the things come, the body's still degenerating. So what you want to do... People I've, talk, people I've talked to that have had it always say, oh, the sun really bothers them. Well, so yeah. So there is more you be getting in there. Well, say again? And they say that damages the retina which sets you up for macular degeneration. All of it. It doesn't, surgery. you know, the mechanisms don't matter. You're just falling apart, yeah. Barbara, with all due respect. I don't mean that meanly. So at, let me just say one more thing, because I want to get to some more calls here. If you focus on digestive health, particularly fat absorption, your body will be able to process zinc, essential fatty acids, and the pigments and vegetables more effectively, and all of these can be protective mm -hmm. for the eyes. Vitamin C also is very protective for the eyes. Selenium is very protective for the eyes. Vitamin E is very protective for the eyes. Did you say D or E? E as an Edward. E okay. as an Edward. Uh, okay. Vitamin D probably too, but E is particularly okay. important. Uh, if you, you can take them supplementally, but it's also important that you focus on fat metabolism. That means your body's ability to process and digest and assimilate uh, all of these, the minerals, zinc and selenium, as well as the fatty nutrients, the essential fatty acids and the fatty vitamins and the pigments. Those pigments are super important for eye health. And as we get older, we do not absorb our reds and our greens and our blues and our yellows, which we call phytonutrients. So making sure your body is processing fats is super important. Those are the two main things I would tell you as far as uh, uh, digestive strategies, blood sugar and fat processing. All okay, right, uh, gonna, uh, digestive nutrients for fats. What uh, lecithin, lecithin, okay. your ultimate enzymes, bile salts, uh, apple cider vinegar, and uh, let's see what else I could tell you here. Uh, oh, uh, you starting off all your meals with something bitter. Something okay. like arugula or dandelion greens. So if you start your meals okay. off with bitters, you'll make more bile. Barbara, I wish All I had right. more time. I, I can't. Thank I got to take. Okay. God bless you. Good luck with everything. Uh, Angela in Florida, welcome to the bright side. What's up? Thank you, Mrs. Ben. This question is actually for a friend. Um, she's been suffering for like eight months with inflammation around the eyes on both eyes. Uh, very red, and sometimes it gets even worse. Food. Where inflammation, if the the uh, skin around the eyes is very thin. So what you're doing is you're observing what's going on in the blood underneath. Uh, whenever there's puffiness or swelling around the eyes, focus on allergic reactions. That's a classic manifestation. It could also be lymphatic toxicity, long-term lymphatic toxicity, uh, but it usually has something to do with food. Surprise, surprise. So again, elimination, uh, uh, do a food diary and then the elimination diet. Make sure you're using probiotics, vegetable juices, caloric restriction, anything that supports gut health. Uh, sauerkraut, miso, tempeh, as well as probiotic supplements, uh, Fucoid Z, aloe vera, noni, chicken soup, forgot about that one, good old chicken soup, the yeah. cartilage, when it dissolves in the water, has a soothing and healing effect on the digestive lining. Chicken soup just is incredibly multifunctional food. Focus on food allergies and food toxicity, and I'm going right. to try, um, try and get one more call. I'm going to try and get one more call. One more call. Sorry, you. Angela. Hey, Kelly, got something quick for me, or you want to call back tomorrow? Kelly? Hello? Uh, oh, I'm Kelly, sorry. <laughs> you know what? We just got about 30 seconds. I'm so sorry to do this to you. I tried to get everybody in. I, I just didn't do it. So if you want, you can uh, shoot me an email, ben at ksco.com, or you can call back tomorrow. But we're just out of time. I apologize, okay, Kelly. Okay, I'll try both. No problem. Okay, Thank you take so care. much. God bless you. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com. And if you're interested in joining the longevity team, call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or check out my blog at pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Thanks for listening, friends. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.